Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, otherwise known as the USPSTF. How's that for an acronym? So, a branch of the U.S. government went out and they looked at, okay, what screening tests are there sufficient scientific evidence for being useful? And actually, as part of the Affordable Care Act, those screening tests that have shown, been proven to actually help uh, you know, maintain or improve or catch disease, make people healthier, are required to be, that screen is required to be covered at 100% by health insurance. And by being covered at 100%, that means the health insurance company has to pay for it, but the individual patient themselves has zero out-of-pocket costs. So it's very common for primary care physicians and OBGYN, some other physicians, to do a variety of screening tests that are covered at 100% in conjunction with the U.S. Preventive Services Test Force. So virtual primary care services are going to be referring out for a variety of these screening services or performing a number of these screening services. So let's go through them. First off, there's going to be some screening services that are based on labs, based on blood draws, and those are things like checking for high cholesterol and also checking for high blood glucose uh, for diabetes. And those are typically done starting at the age of 35 for the cholesterol or starting at age 40 for the blood glucose and the diabetes. However, if you're at increased risk of cardiovascular disease, either because of obesity or hypertension or another risk factor, then actually it's recommended that you start earlier for the cholesterol screening, as young as 18. So. There are guidelines around age and gender and when you should test, and there are some exceptions to that based upon risk factors. And we'll talk about that more with other testing as well. Okay, so those are blood-based screenings. Next up, there's also mammograms for women for breast cancer screening, recommended at age of 50 or greater. Now, that is one guideline. Other guidelines from the American Cancer Society actually recommend 40 or greater. So it depends upon the insurance company as to whether or not they want to cover at 50 or at 40. Um, or if a woman is at increased risk for breast cancer, sometimes she can even have screening mammograms starting younger than the age of 40, but you have to go through sort of an approval process to get that done. Um, so, screening mammograms, also uh, screening that is covered at 100%. Next up, screening colonoscopies. So these are done by gastroenterologists and they are to screen for colon polyps, and colon polyps are essentially precancerous lesions. So colon cancer actually starts out as a benign polyp and then it transforms over time into cancer. So if you can go in and you can identify the polyp and actually remove the polyp, then you've actually removed the precancerous lesion. So it's recommended and uh, it's recommended that uh, colon cancer screening start at age 50. It's actually a new recommendation that it start at the age of 45 for both men and women. It's recommended that you get a colonoscopy every 10 years. And then for people that have a family history of colon cancer, it, it's even recommended that you start earlier than age 50 or 45. So again, there are exceptions where a person might be able to get their screening colonoscopy covered at 100% yet an even younger age. Okay, next up. A CT scan of the lungs screening for a lung cancer. So, of course, people that are at increased risk of lung cancer are people who are smokers. So, if you're over the age of 50 and you have greater than a 30 pack year history of smoking, and a 30 pack year history means that you smoked a pack a day in excess of 30 years, then those people are at increased risk of lung cancer and therefore they qualify for a, a screening CT scan of their lungs covered at 100%. Next up, now so those are like, you know, like radiologic, so mammograms, CT scans, that's a radiology, send somebody to an imaging center to get that done, screen colonoscopy, you have to refer them to a gastroenterologist and they would perform the colonoscopy on an outpatient basis, either at the hospital or at an endoscopy center. And then there's some that are just done typically in the primary care physician's office, or we might do a home blood pressure monitoring kit, etc. So screening for hypertension by checking somebody's blood pressure with a blood pressure cuff. So it's recommended it starts at uh, greater than the age of uh, 18. Uh, there's also screening for obesity, and that's based upon BMI, which is calculated based upon your height and your weight, uh, with obesity being defined as a BMI greater than 30 and overweight as a BMI between 25 and 30. And that's recommended to be screened for obesity at an age greater than 18 years old. There's also sexually transmitted disease and cervical cancer screening. This is typically done for women at their OBGYN when they have their pelvic exam and their pap smear done. So OBGYNs do um, U.S. Preventive Service Test Force uh, screening as well. It's covered at 100%. And then there's also questionnaire-based screening as well for depression and for alcohol abuse and also for smoking. And believe it or not, this does not even cover all of the screenings. 
It's a very lengthy and complicated chart based upon your age and your gender and your risk factors. But here's a variety of the more frequent screenings that are done in conjunction with the USPSTF. And thank you for watching.